Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Code of Princess. In the last episode, we found out that Queen Destiny was in fact the fallen angel to steal. Once we discovered this and attempted to destroy the Empyrean Stone, she blasted our party from the castle, scattering our heroes from across the world. Some of these heroes found themselves in another world entirely, and after teaming up with some unlikely allies, they were able to defeat the corrupt virus Lena and return to their respective worlds. However, along the way, it seems that our fair princess has found herself in yet another world separate from her own. And once again, she's going to have to team up with some new and unlikely allies, as well as defeat an all-new ultimate evil, if she ever hopes to return to her own world and put a stop to the fallen angel to steal. So then, let's take one last detour before returning to Deluxia once and for all. The Red Crystal. The raw fusion of madness and power. Its synthesis has borne a dangerous rift. A cosmic gate connecting worlds never before known to each other is now open. The most sinister of villains seek to claim the Red Crystal. Opposed only by a group of brave heroes sworn to destroy it to prevent the destruction of all worlds. Let's play Crystal Crisis. A great adventure begins. A silent hero meets a treasure hunting stranger. One will move closer to finding the dangerous red crystal. What <laughs> An epic clash with a critical outcome. Remember when Nicholas released this model and tried to trick us all into thinking that quote got confirmed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Yeah, those were the days, am I right? But whatever, good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcome to my Let's Play of Crystal Crisis for the Nintendo Switch. Or as I like to refer to it as, Code of Princess 3, baby! Even though it doesn't have anything to do with Code of Princess all that much, but Solange exists in the game, so therefore it is enough for me to refer to it as Code of Princess 3. But yes, this is going to be the second super awesome crossover thingy game with a bunch of Nicholas and Atlas characters and all that jazz. So we already had the epic adventure with Blade Strangers, which was really, really awesome, and Solange was the main character of that crossover, which was absolutely insane. I have no idea how that was even possible. And then to see another one pop out right after that, and it's still so stinking amazing and mind-blowing. It makes me so happy that she's still here and still being relevant in today's day and age, and I never would have imagined in a million years that that would even be possible. These characters really shouldn't be together, but I'm just so happy that they are, even though I don't know the majority of them. I got introduced to them through this game, 
and now I'm happy to learn from where they came from. So Crystal Crisis, if in case it wasn't already obvious, is a puzzle fighter game. It's sort of like, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for saying this, it's like puzzle, uh, Pokemon Puzzle League or Tetris Attack or something like that. It's a game where you put a bunch of blocks down and try to clear them out, but unlike Tetris where you have to like clear an entire row or like a uh, match up a certain number of colors, basically you need to have a certain crystal block, like the diamond ones pop down, and you have that one touch the same color uh, block that it is, and then it will finally get rid of all those blocks that are touching each other. So I gotta like um, admit that I am absolutely obsessed with puzzle games. I actually have to like kind of force myself to not play this game as much because uh, as soon as I got all the characters unlocked, I had to get it out of my Switch immediately because I would never do anything else. So I'm just, even though I'm not the best at them, I have a very, very unhealthy addiction to it. So I have to like restrict myself from playing it too often. But in terms of Crystal Crisis and what makes it so special and what is causing this episode to exist in the first place, so I know this is being released like long after my Code of Princess Let's Play has already been finished, and this is sort of the first time I'm doing something like this where I'm releasing an episode of an LP that takes place at a certain place within the timeline, even though uh, it's already not happened already. So basically, if you look at the playlist for the Code of Princess LP, you'll see that this episode takes place right after the Blaine Strangers episode and it'll make a lot more sense if you watch it in that order, so refer to that if you want to watch this and have it make somewhat amount of sense, though you don't really need to watch it in the same time because it doesn't really have any relevance to Code of Princess other than Solange existing in it, and I'm just trying to shoehorn as much Code of Princess into this channel as I possibly can. So, in terms of like this main story mode, there's not that much to it. There's a lot of different branching paths, but I can't find any sort of official guide that shows all the different paths. And for the life of me, I can't find one that actually showcases specifically Solange in it. There's no one that like has her be like the main character of it. It's really weird, but I don't understand. It's just like how um, Solange was like the main character of Blade Strangers, but she doesn't really have a main role in Crystal Crisis, which is kind of unfortunate. It's like, uh, it's more so a quote story, but we're definitely going to be seeing Solange in this pathway regardless, so you don't have to worry about it too much. You'll be able to see her, because it would not be a Midnight and Beyond video without seeing Solange, of course, if we have the opportunity to see her, I guess, because she's not in every game, but whatever, she definitely should be. So, in terms of how you actually play this game, like I said, you have to have the crystal blocks land on bl uh, regular blocks of the same color in order to finally get rid of them from your board. You could uh, make it go through from left to right, you could like switch them around like whatever order. You, you know how puzzle games go, even though like they are, it is very different from other puzzle games of the genre, it's sort of self-explanatory if you just look at it for long enough. Uh, you do have super special awesome power moves, as you can see I have a little power up bar. Um, that's split up into three sections. Um, for Quote specifically, he has three different ones, so I could have a really weak one if I just want to trigger a small power move, or I could press it three times to use it all at once and have a super strong one. That's what I typically like to do, because if I'm using up my special moves, I want it to be super powerful. I could either use a super powerful offensive attack to make my opponent's board more chaotic, or I could use a defensive one to clean up my board when I'm in a tight situation. Now I know this may seem like a really weird, out of nowhere idea that for me to have, but like I meant to have this video pop up a long time ago, but I just uh, did not have the proper time to actually get it done a while back. But I, you know, I just need to have to get it done eventually. I gotta back my horse. Didn't mean to call Solange a horse, but you know what I mean. I'm just like, if it had Code of Princess involved, I have to go ahead and showcase it on the channel. And while we have a bond with us, it reminded me that there is DLC planned for the future in Blade Strangers. A bond is actually going to become playable at some point. And at the day of recording this, literally just yesterday, they announced that, well, they didn't really announce, we just saw it at Anime Expo because Nicholas doesn't know how to promote their games properly. Um, they showed that there's going to be two other characters coming to uh, Blade Strangers. There's Pia, who's a new character in the upcoming Umihara Kawase game. And then there's also a second Kawase, who has the official name Sexy Kawase, I swear I'm not making that up. And somehow Zozo and Allegro didn't make the roster, so I'm going to be salty about that to the end of time. But with that, we have taken down a bond and we've made it past our first round, which is very, very cool. And this is the part of the video where I realized that my mic wasn't plugged in, so I've been talking to the computer speaker this entire time, and now I'm going to come back into the future tense and finally have things all situated. What a greatly organized and well put together bonus video for a beloved Let's Play of mine, wouldn't you say, fellas? Okay, but seriously, I'll meet you back in 
future tense, I guess. One hopes to save her family. The other defends the cute creatures of her homeworld. They both fight for good, but only one can win. あなたもレッドクリスタルを探しているのいえ私が探しているのは私の父ただ父もそのレッドクリスタルを探しているようなのふんみんなそんなことを言いながらレッドクリスタルを狙うんだからねクリファイダーズワンデスティニーアンリミ
Yeah, it just made me so stinking angry when that happened, and I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Uh, but let's talk about the positives of this game, because it has a lot of them. This game's music is really stinking good, the gameplay is just super addicting and fun, and uh, according to like a lot of other puzzle enthusiasts and experts, it's a very different experience from stuff like Tetris Attack or uh, Pokemon Puzzle League or anything else like that. It is just a really good time, so you should give it a chance if you haven't already. Uh, let's see, go do that. I need to hurry up and kick Tina's butt in the face, because she's a butt face. And she's using Sharpshooter again, I'm almost filled up though. You don't need to have the entire bar filled up, but as you can see, uh, Curly has three separate bars, so... Uh, if you just press ZR or Z, yeah, ZR or ZL one time, then it will only use up one of the bar, but it's going to be a much weaker uh, special attack. I usually just like to wait until it's completely filled up and then use the strongest special possible, because if I'm using a special, then I want it to be strong. So that's what I do, but some characters um, only have one singular bar, and you have to wait for the entire thing to get filled up before you could use it. And there we go. We have finished that fight, and Curly is now victorious. <laughs> Surprised you didn't find a way to shove Mamiga into that. Two brave female warriors cross swords in their pursuit of the Red Crystal. Heavy metal rules in this battle of wills. なんですばらしい。その件、見せてもらってもいいかな。えっと、ごめんなさい。これは先祖代々伝わる大切な手だ。ここは一つ。どちらの剣が優れているか比べてみようじゃないか。ファイターズ、ワンデスティニー、アン
Solange's specials are not that great. Uh, the nine thing is kind of useful, but like it doesn't uh, make enough blocks nine in order for it to be like super awesome. Uh, I'll show off her defensive thing as well if we get a chance to. Uh, we'll do that and we'll put that over there, there, and that'll do. I'm just getting a bunch of them knocked over right now. Now, oh, this might be the last. No, I don't think it's the last time we see Solange in this specific run. Because as you saw in the beginning, uh, the the story mode has many different outcomes in which it could end up. The final boss is more or less always the same, but in terms of like which characters you play as along the way, that could all change depending on who you play as. I don't think there's a specific code of princess route, unfortunately, so I'm just gonna be going with uh, this route that I went ahead and chose already. Basically, just choosing all the characters that I prefer. And she does her iconic pose, how nice. A dashing vampire hunter locks eyes with a beautiful princess. But romance will have to wait. Each is getting closer. To the red crystal. Tensetsu who will move on to tackle the Red Uprising? Ready, fight! And we are here on the Code of Princess stage at long last. We hear this awesome remix. It just made me so stinking happy to hear like Code of Princess music being recreated and everything like that. It's being focused on, like I just gotta support my little baby. I'm just so stinking happy for Solange and everything like that. Now, something I uh, wanted to get for a long time, there's a Code of Princess merchandise in Japan of a Solange statue. It was actually because of a generic anime girl statue in Japan that the creator of Code of Princess saw one day that was so incredibly incredible to him that he decided to make an entire video game based off of her, and that's how Code of Princess came into being, which is really stinking hilarious. But uh, I've wanted this statue that's been on eBay for so long, but it was like always too expensive, but it's gone down in price a lot recently. But I just realized it's one of those statues that like you have to paint it yourself and I'm like who in the world has like the talent to even do that like it's so stink precise and like why do those even exist like I almost bought a one piece like going Mary or Thousand Sunny statue off eBay but it turned out that like none of the stuff was actually painted and you need to paint it yourself I'm like who would even want to do that it's so stinking insane I don't understand why they do that but and of course the picture that they show you on uh, stinking eBay is it all colored in but no it's self-assembly for the statue which isn't too terrible but then like you have to paint the statue yourself and it's insane I don't understand why they do that but whatever maybe that's your novelty but I'd rather just have the thing entirely painted there's a Solange statue and an alley statue I wish there was those only grow as well but beggars can't be choosers I guess uh, but speaking of things that I wish gets added into later things um blade stranger supposedly is going to get DLC later down the line when releasing screenshots for Crystal Crisis, they showed a Bond, the 1001 Spikes guy. Um, they showed him in Crystal Crisis in uh, Blade Strangers, but he's not a playable character in Blade Strangers. So they confirmed sort of that Blade Strangers is going to have DLC at some point. But that image was like a long stinking time ago, so I don't know what the holdup is. But hopefully we'll see him at some point, and maybe we'll also see Zozo and Allegro at some point. That would be absolutely insane. Because I still don't understand why they chose Master T, but whatever. Uh, just happy that so many characters from Code of Princess got in it all, I guess. And that Solange is like the main stinking character. I want to know like what the choice for that was. Because like, they could have gone with Cave Story or like other franchises or whatever. Or they could have made Helen the, just the poster child. Because she's like created specifically for that game. But no, they went with Solange. And it makes me so stinking happy that they did. Oh my god, I love it so stinking much. 
uh, not the taken care of. I want to show off my ability with Solange, the defensive one, but like it's just not a super great time to do it because I'm just winning so stinking well. Okay, let's try it now. <laughs> Uh, time sparks. You automatically get four uh, colored crystals, one of each color. So you get, and they'll automatically go off after you set them all. So you could plan accordingly, which is nice. Uh, I'll go with this one, this one, and I guess this one. Uh, that was sort of helpful. I could have done that a lot better, I assume, though. Uh, he's using a bomb of some kind. Holy water. Okay, it's not a bomb. Uh, we'll do that, do that. Oh, uh, how many do we have? We'll go with red. And we'll do that. Let's see if we get like a big finisher real quick. If we could charge our thing up before the fight is over. Oh, geez. That's not good. Uh, maybe we'll just need to use defense once again. Who knows? Uh, go with that one. Go with the that one. Using holy water again is not gonna decrease his blocks. I don't know. Uh, let's go for it. Yes. Okay, we actually beat him like a second before I was gonna use the special. Two powerful androids meet face to face. Are they friends or foes? Both want to reach the red crystal before it's too late. I'm sorry if this offends anyone, but I know absolutely nothing about Astro Boy, so I have no attachment to him. Let's go with quote. Ready, fight. I know he's a very impactful, beloved, and revolutionary character, but um, I literally know nothing about him, so I can't really say anything about him and his inclusion here. It's cool. That's about all I could really say, because I literally know nothing about him. Uh, but I am interested in him, like, learning more, a bit more, because that's what crossover games are supposed to do, get you interested in the individual franchises. I was a bit salty about Dragon Quest's inclusion in Smash Bros, but I am more inclined to check it out now, because that's what Smash Bros does. I knew nothing about the Fire Emblem series before Smash Bros, and now I absolutely love Fire Emblem Awakening, and I at least play every game that's come out after it. I don't, whether or not I like it is debatable for some of them, but no, I like some of the Fire Emblem games that come out after it, it's just not Fates, basically. And anything else like with the Mother series, it introduced me, I got introduced to the Mother series through Smash Bros, like I'm sure a lot of other people did. So of course, um, crossovers are really important for that. I uh, am really excited for Umihara Kawase Fresh, which is coming out even though Kawase stole Solange's spotlight in the sink and opening. I am excited for that game to come out. It's, I don't know if it's a remake of the original game or what, but it's coming to Switch and PS4 and it's coming like a really old retro box we bought off Nicholas's website which is really cool and a lot of other bonus goodies as well so I'm excited for that Ready? and yeah some other things I would like to try a thousand one spikes is one of them I don't think we're gonna see it in this run but Biting of Isaac returns in this game and I've yet to play that game but I know a lot of people really stink and love it that would be I feel like I just need to have a copy of that game just so I could play it mindlessly whenever I'm like out somewhere but that's the thing like I never bring my switch out anywhere like I'm always like oh I need the protective case so I could uh could take with me when I travel or anything like that oh I need like this padding or anything like that oh this case looks cool this whatever I never take my switch outside I never go out with it so like I don't need any of this like extra cases or whatever because I never go out with it so and I don't have to worry about like extra battery packs or anything like that because it's always plugged in, always charged and whatnot. So I always play it on the TV. I never play it outside. Like if anything, I play it on the toilet. That's literally it. That's like the furthest I'll ever go with it. But yeah, I know it'd just be nice to have those things. But I'm not really gonna go out of my way to do so because I know out for a fact that I will never use them. Uh, go with that. It's uh, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say about that. It's just like I. Just sort of want it for the sake of having it. I guess I can say that about a lot of things I own, though, because I'm an insane collector. I'm getting a bit more tame, I believe, but I don't know. Uh, with limited run games, it's just like it's making things so stinking tempting. Like, 
They had a Freedom Planet uh, Collector's Edition. It had like a jewel case, a Sega case of awesomeness that I really wanted, but I just did not have the money for it at the time. And even still, I already own it on Wii U, but I really want a physical version of that game because I've been meaning to play it and finish it, but I don't think I ever will because it just takes so long to whip out the Wii U and the loading screens, all that jazz, and like I just don't want to be bothered with it. So I feel like I kind of need to have it on another console. And, uh, let's save myself, shall we? I feel like I need to get on another console if I ever want to finish that game, but I wound up missing out on that. I could still, at the time of recording this, I could still conceivably get a copy of the physical edition, but I don't know if I want to because, like, it's just so stinking expensive to get those nowadays, and, like, I hate that it's limited and I can't complain about it because it's literally called limited run games, so... That's what they do, I just wish it wasn't limited, I wish it was just available through their site constantly. Because it would sell, there's no doubt about that, so like, why are you making it limited? Uh, this is not looking good. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we're tied this time around. Uh, um, they're also about to release a transistor uh, game, which is, well, the transistor game. I kind of want to get the... Uh, special edition or whatever, but like, I don't know, I have Transistor on Steam and also on PS4, I probably should not get another copy of it, but finally they got uh, Into the Woods, um, the two games I've been really holding out for to get physical releases were Into the Woods and, um, what's it called, uh, Hat in Time, because I know for a fact I will adore Hat in Time as soon as I stink and play it, but I've wanted a physical edition for so sing long, and there's still no confirmation for it. There's supposedly something that's just been rumored about it. Um, or like it's someone's been confirmed or leaked somewhere. So hopefully that'll be happening soon. But I have just been so sick and desperate to play that game because I know it's going to be amazing. But I just want it to be physical. I unfortunately have to admit that I was one of the idiots who bought the like physical cardboard box thing of Hat in Time. But it wound up just being a stinking cardboard box that had a piece of paper within it that was shaped like a Nintendo 64 cartridge like I knew the cartridge wouldn't work in the Nintendo 64 but like I thought it was going to be like a paperweight like a physical a uh, replica of a cartridge that you could just like pretend is a real cartridge but no it's like literally made out of paper and it's stupid like all those screenshots I saw of it they uh people like putting it in their N64 it was just angled in a way that made it look like it was a uh, actual cartridge even though it didn't work I thought it would still be cool to have the paperweight but no it's a piece of paper and I wasn't able to return it and I'm just really seeing an anger that I wasted my money on that it came with a steam code but I don't want it on steam because I don't want anything on steam because I don't want anything digital I like having things physical Ugh. I know it's like the ultimate first world problem but whatever I just ugh, I just really wish that I had in time would release on a physical media already. It's really stinking annoying that it is not done so already. It's so stinking successful, I don't understand how that hasn't happened yet, but whatever. It's gonna be happening supposedly soon. And uh, Night in the Woods is finally happening, so I another, another game that I feel like I just am going to love as soon as I play it, so uh, I'm excited for that to finally release. And I actually don't own that already, so especially not twice over, so I could just go ahead and get that. Bon must now face his obsessed father. Can he warn the old man of the danger of the Red Crystal? Or has he finally gone too far? Oh, oh my god! You guys are misguided, huh? That's the Munja. That's the Washino Muskuda, huh? So, did you? I'm not sure. Who will face the power of the Red Crystal? Ready? Fight! Now I really don't like this. We played as Solange twice, and yet she is nowhere to be seen in the rest of this route. I don't understand that. And we beat Stinkin' Abon in the first stinking chapter of this route, and yet he is here in one of the final fights of it. I don't get that. I know this is like his father's, so like it's a character that like he's connected to and whatnot, but like we didn't use Tina or Abon, and yet they could still appear here in the end because they're the only ones associated with this character. 
It's really stinking dumb, and I don't like it. I wish we could have a Code of Princess Root. Blah, blah, blah. You heard it a million times already. But back into the to topic of, like, limited run stuff. Um, another game that, I, like, I wanted to get from there, but I just missed out on it was Firewatch. Uh, it's just a game I've been interested in. I already have it on Steam. Haven't played it yet because I don't have time for anything, and my computer's a piece of crud when I'm trying to run uh, computer games. Uh, but it's uh, something that I would have liked to have had physical. Like, I didn't even know it was on PS4 in general, but, like, uh, there it is. So I'm gonna try and wait for a sale of some kind because. The only thing I know that I wound up getting it um, on Steam, thinking that was my only option. Uh, I'm gonna break yellow. That was really bad for a second. Uh, other things like that. Uh, but speaking on the topic of Firewatch, it reminded me that a game that I've been waiting for to release still hasn't been released yet. It's called uh, In the Valley of Gods. It's uh, from the same creators as Firewatch, and I... I've uh, been really singing and excited for it ever since it was shown off at E3 2017, I think. Uh, I don't know what this does. Uh, sure, whatever. Um, it was shown off at, like, E3 2017, like, it hasn't been seen since, but supposedly it's being released this year. I don't know if that's gonna be true or not, but, uh, hopefully it will be. Okay, that was a very easy first round. Ready, fight! Yeah, it looked really stinking good, and I hope it gets released soon. There are some other games that, like, you really hope get a physical release because they're really stinking good and whatnot. Um, or just, you're like me and you don't want to play it on a computer, and there's no other option. Uh, I'd really like to see a physical release of Franbo. That's a game I've, uh, played a little bit of, but haven't really gone full force with it because it's not on a console, and I don't really want to play it on a computer. It's just not comfortable to play things on a computer. Uh, I guess that's another reason why I want Portal to get, like, a re release or a remake, because I don't want it to be on... Like, Steam exclusive. I know there's Orange Box as an option, but, like, who the fruit has the Orange Box? It's so stinking rare. And, uh, it's so weird that, like, Portal 2 is its own PS3 game, but then, uh, Portal 1 just never got re released as, like, a digital download or anything. It's so awkward. I don't know why that is, but whatever. Oh, uh, just keep doing this. But, uh, Frambo, supposedly Frambo 2 is in the works, which is kind of cool. I would like to actually know how that first game ends, though. Uh, because it was really cool from what I experienced, I just haven't finished it. Uh, let's see. Let's go with blue, because we got those uh, number ones which are going to take a while to get rid of, so we can just get rid of them right away. Which is very nice. Do that, do that. Uh, we'll go with yellow. And we got some double crystals up in here. Do that, and that. Cool beans, quite literally, because we're in the snow. Uh, this, and 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 a little bit of this, uh, uh this should be good to go, maybe we can just finish him off right here, oh, I don't know what his special does, really, he just gets angry, uh, whatever, I don't know what that means, but it hopefully helped a little bit, wait, did we beat him, why are we frozen, oh, wait, we're still doing a thing, god, uh, god darn it, get, things I don't understand you a bomb this is why I didn't want to play as you because you're lame and penguins not the penguins the club penguins oh geez that's a lot of blocks that's a lot of blocks a lot of blocks a lot of blocks okay oh geez uh we'll go with that we'll go over here I guess uh, this is when it gets intense but you can't give up until the very end oh what should I do what should I do what should I do uh well, I don't have a choice now go with red Oh, uh, we'll do that, and that, and that, and we're good! Okay, we held out. Astro Boy has defeated plenty of crafty bad guys in the past, but this clever demon has some tricks up his sleeves. One more step on the path to their goal. What the fruit is up with that guy's voice? Like, I don't know what he's from or why he sounds like that, but what? Like, I remember just being like mind 
blown or just like speechless when that happened. I was just like, what the fru kind of voices? It's like singing Pika from One Piece. I was just like laughing way too stinking hard. But whatever, he is actually a pretty tough enemy, all things considered. He's got some really annoying specials. Hopefully we don't have to see him too much in this fight. Oh, go ahead and do that. And again, we did not play as Astro Boy. Where the fruit is Solange? Like, why would you just do this to her? Like, is was that the sacrifice for her having an, getting an actual bra in this game? That she had to lose relevance in the plot or something like that? I don't know why you do this to me, game. But whatever. Let's see what we can do. Uh, do that, and that all piled up, which is nice. Uh, do that. Uh, we'll destroy the red ones. Uh, fooey. There. And there. Just get like. Whenever you play games like this, do you ever just like have like puzzles going on in your head and like you just like play it in your mind and something like that? Because after that's what happened to me after I finished playing this for the first time a uh, while. I just like uh, kept on dreaming of it and I kept on like thinking about like different puzzle combinations and just like. Uh, playing out different mechanics in my head. It was just really stinking awkward how like this thing can get super duper addicting if you let it Oh boy, uh, let's go triple counter uh, triple attack. What do you got? Reprogram. I don't know what that does, but whatever just like change the Blocks around or whatever uh, Doesn't seem too great. I would have liked if we had stinking salon here, but whatever uh, Go with that. Oh geez. Uh, hopefully we could get through this okay. Do that, do that, and oh, I just realized it's near the 4th of July, so, uh, I don't know if that was a firework I just heard, but maybe I should keep that in mind so I don't record late at night, uh, for the next little while, because everyone loves shooting off fireworks, like, throughout the first two weeks of July. Oh boy, let's go over here, and here. Uh, do that. So you get a little combo going on. Uh, he's just about done. There you go. And we can keep our fully charged meter for Ready, the next round. Fight. Which is cool. And I don't know why, but like my sinking switch is like blowing really sinking hard. The fan is like going insane trying to run this game. Like, I don't know what it is about the puzzle fighter that makes it so intense to run on a console, but whatever. I don't know if the PS4 version wor works any better, but... It's really stinking weird how it just seems to cause so much strain for the console. I'll do that and that. I appreciate having such an easy time with him because he was always like the most annoying person for me to fight. I'll do that. And that. I guess we can do this right now. Does that really help all that much? I don't think so, but whatever. Uh, go over here. And go. And go. And a go. And the good thing about 4th of July is that, like, a bunch of stinking dogs are barking while the fireworks are going on. So it's just like, it's a recorder's worst nightmare to just exist during July, basically. <laughs> it won't be Solange, that's for sure. Thanks, game. Appreciate it. Love you, Bay. From the shadows, the ninja emerges to face the vampirus. A different kind of darkness. それは貴様の話だろ。俺にはそんなガラクタに魅了されるようなところなど残っていない。よくわかってるわ、坊や。あなたに見せてあげる。One more step on the path to their goal. And then this dude just shows up out of nowhere again. I'm sorry I keep bringing this up, but where the fruit are the characters I actually use? Maybe I should have avoided using Solange so that I could use her in the finale. Maybe that's how it works in this backwards world of wonder. I don't think and know. It's really stinking confusing. But what evs? Just keep on a going. Uh, let's go here. Do that. 
And that, uh, I remember Elise also being kind of annoying to defeat. She has a really annoying power move. Hopefully we won't see it. Yeah, that, that was, a, like, an insanely easy fight with the other dude whose name I can't even remember. Like, that was a, one of the easiest matches I've ever had with him, which I appreciate, but still, I kind of wish I could show off a bit of what he did. Uh, I, for, when fighting against Elise, I recommend just using your specials as soon as they become available to you. I'm still going to try and hold out and... Wait for them to be fully charged, but we'll see how that goes, I guess. Uh, I want to get rid of the green ones, I guess. Do that, and that, and that. There you go. That's a good combo. Let's go ahead and use this. Because her special is that she is able to drain your uh, power bar, which is really sinking and annoying, so make sure you don't let it go to waste. Um, do that next. Uh, that next. Okay. Like, that stinking fan is going like crazy. The only other game that I remember just having a really hard time with the fan, I guess, is Bayonetta 1 and 2 on Wii U. Like, it just blows so stinking hard. I guess it's appropriate for Bayonetta to be blowing, but, um, it just blows so stinking hard on the Wii U. I don't know why it's, like, exclusively with that game. It's so weird, but whatever. As long as it's running, I guess, then I guess we're fine. Uh, we'll do that. Break all those. And I really would like it if this match got wrapped up soon. Because we're dealing with a bunch of numbers. Uh, she's helping out her own side. Wait, that was her de her defense thing? Oh, no, I forgot about that. Yeah, her defense is that she drains our bar. Her offense is that she could just make our thing get all scrambled. What? Uh, oh, jeez. I don't know if that was a good move. Okay, it looked pretty good to me. Do that. And we're good. Okay, cool. That was a really good move. Yeah, her defense is that she drains your bar. Her offense is that she just makes Ready? your blocks Fight. constantly rotating against your will, which is really annoying. Oh, uh, keep on going, I guess. This game also has, like, a list of achievements that you could get if you're one of those people who just loves achievements and you want to go ahead and unlock them all. Uh, it's so weird, like, Nintendo won't implement a achievement system in their games, or in their consoles, but then their individual games will have achievements. It's like how they got rid of Miiverse, but now their individual games just have Miiverse in them, which is weird. And it gets debuts to high heck, which is typical, because we can't have nice things. Do that. Uh, probably ways to do it right then and there, but whatever. Uh, we'll do right there. Uh, how about up there, and up there. That bar filled up, and she's doing the little rotation again. Which she's not. Oh wait, no, that was a drain of the bar, okay. We didn't really have that much to begin with, though, so it's all good in the neighborhood. Uh, that, and that. Uh, we need a blue one up in here, or we could just use this. Uh, what else we got? Yellow, yellow, oh jeez. In the bar again. Oh no. At least she doesn't add it to her own. That would be pure stinking evil. Uh, let's do that. And. This is a fight that goes on forever because uh, she keeps on draining your stinking bar and you're not able to do massive damage to her, but she doesn't really do all that much to you either. Just kind of waits you out, which is kind of annoying. Uh, let's go with that. Oh, no, no, of course, she's gonna drain it. Oh, it does add to her bar a little bit, but just not all that much, okay? Okay, I'll do, speaking of not all that much, I'll just do a little bit of a special to her, just so I could actually use my special for once. Do that, do that. Oh, go over here, we're getting close. Uh... The red one right there. Oh, jeez. It's getting intense. One of those intense fights. I'll go with red. And unfortunately, you don't get, like, the multiplier, like, the block bonus where, like, all the blocks you destroy go over to her side when you use that, but whatever. Just protecting yourself is nice in its own way. Do that. Do that. And we're good! <laughs> Two heroes are destined to face the final challenge together as they stand before a familiar enemy.
封印の間で片付けたと思ったのに私を殺せさもなきばお前を殺すそう言ったはずだ忘れたのかはいはい覚えてますよ口先だけの脅しは終わったまだだできるものなら私を止めてみろまあ無理だろうけどな面白いこと言うのねなら口先だけじゃないことを証明してみなさいよ Who will move on to tackle the red uprising? Ready? Fight! Well, look who decided to show up. We can finally play as Quote and Curly again. I do mean both of them because if you press L, then you could switch to the other character, which is really, really cool. Uh, there is a doubles mode in this game where you could, like, have two boards at the same time instead of having, like, two victories. You just gotta, like, uh, keep on going till, uh, the double opponent on the other side is able to run out of blocks, if that made any sense whatsoever. It is a cool mode. This game has, like, a lot of cool, uh, modes and whatnot, just a lot of different ways you could play, and a lot of customization and whatnot. It is really cool and fun, and I recommend it, despite all my complaining about the lack of Code of Princess content in it. But whatevs. Uh, but we're just gonna keep on going. Finally, we made it to the end. My Root has decided that Quote and Curly are gonna take down Balos together. This could end in many different ways, having a bunch of different people fighting Balos in the end. You always fight the same four villains in the end, but uh, depending on who you went through the game with, it will change who ends up fighting those people. Uh, I don't know how my decisions made it so these guys showed up, but whatever. Uh, we'll do that. And we are going to do that, and that. Uh, thankfully, Balos is not nearly as godforsaken awful to fight as he is in Cave Story, but uh, still a pretty intense fight nonetheless. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like, it's just been like a bit of a, a stalling thing for uh, Mystery Dungeon. I feel really bad that that went on hiatus for a bit, but um, I guess we're all on the topic of fully voice acted Let's Plays. My Let's Play of Cave Story is actually my first fully voice acted Let's Play. It is... Uh, the same cinematic style that, well, not really the same cinematic style, because, like, during the normal gameplay stuff, I'm commentating it like normal. But, every single bit of dialogue in the game is fully voice acted, which is really cool, so... I just wanted to make that LP stand out a bit more, and I felt like that was the perfect way to do it. So, if you haven't seen that LP, I highly recommend it, and, uh, as well as the little bonus LP of Ika-chan that sorta kinda went along with it as well. That's also really good, and of course, Code of Princess is a Let's Play that I put a lot of heart and soul into, and that has bonus videos coming soon, so uh, that's another thing that could hold you over until Mystery Dungeon returns. But now that's taken care of, we could use... we'll go for the green. That, and his first round is done. Only I could take down Balos in the first try in the actual what? game. If you want to see a lot of stinking... I don't, actually, was there a lot of rage in there? I don't even really remember. Uh, let's go with that. I remember just the final boss took forever and a day to beat, though, because it's pure stinking evil. Uh, I should not use that special, because, like, uh, Curly Special doesn't add blocks to his thing. It just, like, replaces all the existing ones with seven blocks. So that's a pretty good chunk of change right there for him to deal with, so it's pretty good to have. And, of course, I'm just, like, completely ditching Quo, because Curly is clearly the better of the two, so, of course, I'm going to want to use her. Uh, he has some very evil special attacks. Uh, well, that was a very uh, defensive one, but his special attack, it actually uh, shrinks your board, where, like, you lose the left and right side, so you only have, like, uh, two less bars to work with. It's really stinking evil. Uh, but let's just keep going. We won't have to run into that. Uh, we'll do that, and that. And a little bit of red crystal. Hey, we found the red crystal, guys. No, no, no. Uh, we'll do that, and... Huh. Just keep on going. We're gonna make it through this. Don't you worry, your silly little self. I'm sure Solange is just cheering us on from the sidelines. If it weren't for her, then we wouldn't be able to make it here somehow in some way. I don't really know how, but whatever. Uh, we're gonna... Red, I guess? Uh, yellow would probably been better. Uh, yeah, we should've gone for yellow. Let's see if we do that. Okay. That's very nice. Hurry up and use my special. From down under. Oh yeah, Curly. Stinking love her so stinking much. She's so awesome. Oh, uh, go do that and that. Get a little bit of that action. Oh, uh, do that. 
Almost about done here. It's getting pretty high up. I might be sneaking up on you, Balosi Poo. It's also nice to just have like a chill fight with Balos. Like, when do you ever get to say that? Like, unless you're just like a speedrunning pro of Cave Story or whatever. Oh, jeez, what's happening? He's using Constrict. Yep, there he goes with his power thing. So now we have less stinking room to deal with. And of course, it's very Cave Story esque, but it doesn't matter because he's done. And now we get his puppy. また Friend and foe alike must fight to the end. Ready? Fight! This is the final battle in the game against the undead core from Cave Story. I don't know why they went with that, and I don't know why Balas is afraid of it, because that was not even the ultimate evil in Cave Story, so I don't know what that's all about. And also, like, why well, was he was like trying to stop this thing from awakening? Like, how does defeating him make this thing awake? Or how does defeating him make this thing awaken? And like, why is it like, oh, now we're all doomed because you did that? Why have you done like, you were gonna kill us all anyway? So now you're just angry that like everyone ex is gonna die, including you, when before it was just gonna be you would be the only survivor. Now you're just like saying that we've done something stupid. I don't know. All is just weird. And there are no alterations to that cutscene, no matter what you do. Like, that's the only extra ending cutscene like that, which is sort of unfortunate. But, whatever, I just wish, like, my... These games were all, like, a bit more heavy with story. I wish that Blade Strangers had a bit more than, like, ten minutes of story to it. But, it seems like I'm the only... I'm, like, in a very small uh, margin of people who want that. Uh, he could drain the bar as well, that's not cool. I'll do that. That. Uh, we will head over here, and here, and, uh, I kind of blocked off the red crystals, oh no, that's awkward. And, oh, he's got another, he's got one of those big boy crystals up there. It's a cool fight and all, like, I guess I'll give it that, but it's just like, why did they choose this, I guess? I don't know what I was really expecting. I don't know, it would have been cool if Lena was in this game too, like, she was connected to, like, all these spin-off games, she was, like, the main antagonist of them all, but... Oh, Jesus, I should probably... Oh, no, what? Go and destroy some of these things if we can. Only one row? That's so bad. Oh, we'll do that. We'll do that. Do that. Uh, we're gonna have to be holding out really quick. Okay. Uh, I'll go for that, okay. I should use my special now, but I want to get it charged up fully. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, uh, let's go with blue. Okay, maybe I don't even need to do it after all. And I'll do it anyway. I'll do that just because I really like seeing the curly eyebrow gif again. There we go, I love that singing pose so much. I wish Carly was in uh, Smash Bros, uh, her and Quo, because they're very beloved characters and whatnot. And they're sort of like the indie characters that like define- the indie game that defines indie games, which is like, that started indie games, the revolution of them, I guess. It's a very impactful game, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, let's just keep on going. How about right there? We already got the first round done, which is nice. But I got through this without, um, I shouldn't be saying this so soon, but like, I'm glad that I have gone this far without getting any game overs. We had that, uh, double round with, I think it was with Astro Boy, in quote. But that was a very minor thing, minor obstacle on the way. You don't have to worry about it too much. We got to spend that time, like, complaining about a bunch of things, like physical releases and, uh, Code of Princess and stuff, so that's always fun. Home run! Just building up that meter so stinking much, oh my god. Uh, 
Let's see what he's doing. Oh no, he's draining our power again. He's just about to use that too. Uh, we'll go with red. So let's go with that. Uh, did I mean to do that? Like that. And that. And a little bit of that. Uh oh, first vortex. He's still draining. I was about to use it. I'm waiting for it to get fully charged. You're a jerk. Stinking Elise. Uh, keep on going, keep on going. I don't know if he has like every character special or if he just has all these things. I don't think I know. No, if you're wondering, you can't play as the undead core. He plays all these other characters, but not this guy. Uh, he's doing Chameleon Kid. Yeah, I think he does have everyone's specials now that I think about it. Uh, do that. Uh, we are about to. God darn it, we were just about to use our special, but then like, blocks got in the way. It blocked our progress, but we can do it now! Hurry up, Curly. Go for it! All those blocks and replace one seven. It's very, very nice. Uh, evacuation or excavation. I just sort of scrambled them around, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but we got that one. We should go with green. Okay, yeah. I was going to go with it. I was like, I saw the green crystal up uh, coming up, so I was like, maybe I don't need it, but no, I needed it. And we're good! We have defeated the undead core and saved all worlds once again with the power of puzzles. Isaac wasn't even here yet, Dingus! The world is safe for now. What an anticlimactic ending. I hope it was worth it! But surprise, it was worth it because this credit zone is amazing! And we get to see anime cutscenes! Hooray! Makes it all worth it in the end because I love seeing these characters together just hanging out. Like, look at Stingin' Balos! Like, the big bad, big bad evil, one of the most despicable villains in video games, one of the most annoying fights to ever face. And he's just like cooking food for everyone, it's just so stinking funny. And then, like, Johnny Turbo's getting drunk with this guy and everything like that, it's with Angry Penguin and a drunk penguin. I just love this stinking credit sequence so stinking much. And little Isaac being created by little Elise, so adorable. Yeah, it's all been worth it now because we get to see an anime cutscene and hello, a lady sleepover and like she's got the old burger and then Solange. Look at Solange's hair! Oh my god, she's wearing clothes! That's like the most clothing we've ever seen on Solange. It's a revolutionary day indeed. I just love this so thing much. Like even though I don't know half of these characters, this makes me like want to see a show with them all. Or just, I want more anime cutscenes, darn it! I just look so stinking cool. And here's Obama driving with a bon, uh, and a zombie in the Wario car for some reason. Okay, sure. Singing curly brace on the beach, looking all sexy with Helen and oh, wait, no, that's Helen. It's Tina and singing Isaac freaking out over a crab because he can never catch a break, of course. And they're doing karaoke, and Solange is there too. Look at Solange; she's existing in a game that isn't Code of Princess. It makes me so stinking happy. Oh my god! And then quotes just laughing his butt off. This most personality we've ever seen. How quote it feels like. And this awesome little fireworks sequence, which also looks really cool. I love this credit sequence so stinking much. The song's amazing. The characters are amazing. I really like getting to see them all together. And I hope this is the last we see of them. I like seeing their franchises get restored into their own individual thing. And I like seeing them uh, interact together in these really cool crossovers that you wouldn't really expect and you couldn't really ask for because you can't even, like, uh, see it coming really half the time. It's a really cool thing and I know it means a lot to a lot of people if you know these characters. For me, Code of Princess is that under the radar hidden gem game that I have decided to uh, keep attached to for the rest of my life. And I am so happy that it's gotten so much attention over the past couple of years. I really hope that's not the end of it, and we'll see more Code of Princess content in the future. Perhaps a full-blown sequel? Who knows? Only time will tell- No animals were harmed in the making of this game, only 3D penguins? Okay, I don't remember seeing that, but it's a very funny thing to see at the end. Presented by Nicholas. But yes, we have done it. We have saved the world with the power of puzzles. 
Red Crystal is no more. So now that all that is finally taken care of, our fair princess can finally return to Deluxia and save her world from the fallen angel. Better what you beg.